Adobe Muse supports what's known as responsive web design. This means that web page content will adjust to fit everything from a large desktop display, through tablet devices, down to a low bandwidth smartphone device. Now, in addition to adjusting elements like text and placed images, Muse also supports responsive widgets like menus, contact forms, and slideshows. Here at the top of the page, I have something known as a composition widget. This is a really sophisticated widget that allows you to define triggers or click points and targets the resulting content that appears when you click on that trigger. Notice that I have text placed in the first instance. When I click on that second one, the text is in a very different location. Composition widgets allow you to place other widgets inside of them. I can have something like a rollover button that allows me to click to a different location on the site. And notice as I resize that browser window, I can totally change the layout of each of the elements in this composition widget based on the class of devices that are viewing that content. Let's take a look at how I went about creating this responsive composition widget in Adobe Muse. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Adobe Muse application. And let me explain a few things I've done to set up some of the other responsive features in Muse. On my master page, I know that I want to support navigation for three classes of devices. So I've set up three breakpoints. The first one has a menu in the right-hand corner. It's a responsive menu that I've set to be fixed in width. If I jump to the tablet layout, I still have that same menu, but I can redefine it to be fluid in width so that it will support a range of tablet devices. If I jump to the phone layout, that same menu has been moved down on the page. Notice that it's pinned to the center of the page, and it's still fluid to support a range of smartphone devices. If I now jump to the home page, what I want to do is make sure that this composition widget will work across all of those same breakpoints. If I just come and grab the gripper here and press and drag to see how this widget is going to respond, it's in pretty good shape, but as I get to smaller devices, things definitely start to fall apart. So let's go ahead and add a new breakpoint and adjust our content accordingly. I want to set the breakpoint at the same mark where my tablet navigation is going to come into effect from the master page. The easiest way to do that is to click once on the triangle that indicates that master page breakpoint, and then a second time on that plus sign to create a breakpoint on the page. Now that I've done that, I'm going to move the content here down a bit on the page. One way I can free up space in this tablet breakpoint will be to move my triggers towards the bottom. So I'm going to come and select them and just drag them down towards the bottom really quickly. Now I want them to be about one-third the size of the target. So with a quick look here, I see that target is 811 pixels. I'll select these three triggers and I'm just going to type in 811 divided by 3 in that transform panel. And then I'm going to drag these so that they're evenly spaced towards the bottom. And I'll make them a little shorter. And move my page content up a little tighter towards the top. Okay, great. Now that I've done that, I want to make sure all of the triggers are fluid in width because I want their containers to resize. I can do that in the resize drop-down area. And now that I have more space to work with, I can adjust the content. So real quickly, I'm going to come in and select all of the text objects within this container. And I'll center them with a command key. And I'm just going to make them a little larger and place them right to the center. I'll even use the Align panel to make sure they're centered onto one another. All right, I'm just doing this quickly. I could go back and fine tune it if I wanted to. In the second instance here, I'll come in and select all of those objects. I'm going to center them with the keyboard command, align them to one another, move them into position. Now you'll notice in the tool panel, I have the toggle selected that allows me to create unique text attributes per breakpoint. 
This is what's allowing me to change any attribute about the text that I'd like to. Let's go ahead and do this one more time for the last target. I'm going to move that off to the side, select my text objects, center them, and move them towards the middle of the area. OK, now that I have that done, I'm going to want to make sure that the content that is centered will remain centered. So I'll select the text objects here and pin that to the center of that target area. Let's check that real quickly for these other objects as well. I'll select them all, make sure they're pinned. Let's take a look at our work. I'm going to pull down on File to preview the page in the browser. Muse is going to quickly render all of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I can see my desktop layout with my triggers here on the left-hand side. If I press and drag now and jump to that tablet class of devices, notice that my triggers are on the bottom and the text has been adjusted as well as the trigger content to this new breakpoint. Well, that's just a brief explanation of how you can really customize your designs using fully responsive widgets in Adobe Muse. I encourage you to give it a try.